There are a variety of proving strategies or techniques one could use for predicate calculus. We're going to be using equivalence style proofs. They start with basic equivalences. The basic equivalences are the laws that are, are our principal tools for manipulating predicates. So in this video, I want to go through some of the ones that we'll be using. We should know them and their names well. But to help us out in the navigating bar on the edX platform, under laws of logic, we will have the basic equivalences given so that you can uh, look at them if you need to. So let's let E1, E2, and E3 be any predicates. As far as the basic equivalence goes, one of the first ones I want to look at is commutativity. We say E1 and E2 is equivalent to E2 and E1. We say conjunction is commutative. What in my mind that means is that the place for the expression isn't important. So E1 and E2 is the same as E2 and E1. Conjunction, disjunction, and equivalence are all commutative. To prove these, we could actually use truth tables. In fact, all of our basic equivalences could be proven with truth tables. Once we have the basic equivalences, we can prove other predicates by manipulating using these basic equivalences. But to start, we could prove these if we wanted to using our truth tables. So let's look at another of the basic equivalences. That's associativity. Conjunction and disjunction are associative. That means that the grouping isn't important. If we have a string of conjunctions or a string of disjunctions, in fact, we don't really need parentheses because E1 and the quantity E2 and E3 is equivalent to the quantity E1 and E2. Get that answer. And E3. And so it doesn't matter the grouping that or the operation we perform first. Um, so we don't really need the parentheses to tell us which one of these operators we need to perform first and second, or in fact anywhere in the string. Same thing with disjunction. Disjunction is associative, so E1 or the quantity E2 or E3 is equivalent to the quantity E1 or E2 or E3. Conjunction distributes over disjunction, and disjunction distributes over conjunction. What does that mean? Well, if we have E1 and the quantity E2 or E3, that's equivalent to E1 and E2 or E1 and E3. E1 or the quantity E2 and E3 is equivalent to the quantity E1 or E2 and the quantity E1 or E3. So remember, though, that equivalence is commutative. So it goes both ways. The quantity E1 or E2 and the quantity E1 or E3 could be written as E1 or the quantity E2 and E3. This seems a little bit harder for us to notice. I almost think of it as equivalent to factoring in algebra. You could pull out the E1 from the expressions. Other basic equivalences that we're going to be running into are De Morgan's Law. If we have the negation of the quantity E1 and E2, that's the negation of E1 or 
the negation of E2. Same thing if we have the negation of the quantity E1 or E2. That's the negation of E1 and the negation of E2. So if we're taking the negation, what we need to do is negate both components and ands turn to ors, ors become ands. That's De Morgan's laws. The negation law is that if we take the negation of the negation of an expression, we get the original expression back. Excluded middle is if we have E1 or not E1, that's equivalent to true. Contradiction is E1 and not E1 is equivalent to false. So these are a few of the others. Implication is one of the basic equivalences that I use often when I want to prove something about a predicate that involves implication. Usually this is where I start because E1 implying E2 is equivalent to not E1 or E2. We could prove this again using a truth table. Equivalence means if you want to show that E1 is equivalent to E2, one strategy is to show that E1 implies E2 and E2 implies E1. Often this is the strategy that we use in mathematics to prove that two predicates are equivalent. Not so much in, in this course because we're going to be using equivalent style proofs. Other basic equivalences that we're going to be running into often are or simplification and and simplification. E1 or E1 is equivalent to E1. E1 or true is equivalent to true. E1 or false is equivalent to E1. And E1 or E1 and E2 is equivalent to E1. This helps us simplify. And simplification tells us that E1 and E1 is equivalent to E1. E1 and true is equivalent to E1. E1 and false, of course, is equivalent to false. E1 and E1 or E2 is also equivalent to E1. Simplifies a lot. Identity tells us that every expression is equivalent to itself. So often, of course, we invoke identity. Now, these first 12 are used by many people as the basic equivalences. We've added two more because especially number 13 we run into often in our work. It corresponds very much to um, and simplification and or simplification. We run into implications often and you could prove these either with truth tables or even actually with the other basic equivalences, but it's good for us to notice that anytime you have an expression implying itself, that's always true. False implying an expression is always true, and any expression implying true is always true. These will be very convenient for us to use in the future. Contrapositive the statement that tells us that E1 implying E2 is equivalent to not E2 implying not E1 is something that is the example that I used in a previous video to show that we could use truth tables to prove tautologies. I want to revisit this particular basic equivalence and actually prove it by invoking the other basic equivalences and using use this as an example of how to create an equivalent style proof. So I look forward to 
doing this in the next video.